This video was brought to you by Tab for a Cause. Install the extension in your browser and raise money for Ukraine just by opening tabs. The link is in the description. Left-wing politics in France have a rich history. However, left-wing parties have had a pretty torrid time in recent years, with the last two French presidential elections turning into a battle between the centre and the far right. Which is why, in a bid to turn around their electoral prospects, parties from the French left have come together for the first time in 20 years to form an electoral alliance ahead of the June legislative elections, in the hope of denying President Macron a parliamentary majority and forcing him to install this man, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, as Prime Minister. So in this video, we'll take a look at the new electoral alliance, how it came together and what it's hoping to achieve, as well as assessing its chances of success in June. As you'll likely already know, Emmanuel Macron comfortably secured a second presidential term back in April, after he defeated his far-right challenger, Marine Le Pen, for a second time. But that didn't spell the end for election season in France. In fact, Macron faces one more hurdle before he can properly get on with his second term, the legislative elections, which are set to be held over two rounds in June this year. April's presidential vote already saw the reshaping of the French political landscape around three broad voting blocs the left around Mélenchon, the liberal centre around Macron, and the far right around Le Pen. It was the latter two blocs that got the most attention though, and understandably so. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, a hard left veteran of French politics, did narrowly miss out on making it the second round, but it was close. A shift of just a fraction of the vote that went to other left-wing candidates could have pushed Mélenchon into the second round, although by all indications, he would have likely suffered a similar fate to Le Pen if he had made it there. But it's in the wake of this seemingly missed opportunity that the four most prominent left-wing parties have decided to build a new alliance ahead of the legislative elections. This new electoral alliance is called the New Social and Ecological Popular Union, known as NUPES in French, and it brings together Mélenchon's party, France Unbowed, with the centre-left Greens, the far-left Communists, and the centre-left Socialists. Its name plays homage to the Popular Front, the electorally successful left-wing movement of 1936. And the new agreement sees constituencies in France's 577-seat National Assembly allocated between the parties. So, across the country, left-wing voters will be able to vote for the sole Popular Union candidate, rather than having to choose between four separate left-wing candidates. The agreement's stated aims are to prevent President Macron from continuing his, quote, unjust and brutal policies, and defeat the far right by winning a majority in the National Assembly and making Jean-Luc Mélenchon the Prime Minister. Now, this is where things require a bit of explanation. French presidents, who also hold a majority in the National Assembly, wield considerable executive power but it gets much harder for them, near impossible in fact, to implement their domestic agenda if an ideologically opposing force has a majority in Parliament. That's because the Prime Minister, while chosen and appointed by the President, must have confidence in the National Assembly, and as it's set out in the Constitution, it's the Prime Minister that directs the actions of the government, which in turn determines and conducts the policy of the nation. So, when President and Prime Minister are from opposing parties, this is known as a cohabitation. Since the French Fifth Republic was established in 1958, there have only been three periods of cohabitation. The first two instances saw a socialist president forced to cohabit with a right-wing Prime Minister, while the third saw a right-wing president forced to cohabit with a socialist Prime Minister. In these periods of cohabitation, the president is basically pushed to the legislative sidelines, with the exception of some areas of foreign and defence policy, with the prime minister instead functioning as the actual political executive. So that's what the new social and ecological popular union is trying to achieve. 
And aside from having a pretty funky logo, the parties also have agreed on a long list of proposals, including raising the minimum wage to a net €1,400 a month, lowering the retirement age to 60, strengthening labour laws, capping prices of essential goods, implementing a golden climate rule, ending the so-called presidential monarchy by establishing a sixth republic, introducing citizens' initiative referendums, and much more. Policies aside though, it was initially the Greens and Communists who struck a deal with Mélenchon's France Unbowed, and joined the Popular Union following the presidential election earlier this year. Then, a few days later, the Socialist Party decided to join too, although this decision has created ruptures within the party. The main point of contention is the popular union's willingness to disobey and derogate from certain European Union rules. For example, economic and budgetary rules that could prevent a potential popular union government from implementing its program. As a pro-EU party, the once mighty socialists have historically been a driver of French integration into the union. For some, including former party heavyweights, this part of the agreement, coupled with long-term hostility towards Mélenchon's brand of populism and Euroscepticism, just proved too much. Former President François Hollande has already voiced his opposition to the pact, while a former Prime Minister has already quit the party. Nonetheless, the National Council of the Socialist Party did vote to approve the party's accession to the pact, and while this does mean that they're willing to disobey certain EU rules, the text of the agreement also states that a popular union government cannot have its policy exit from the EU or single currency, and would aim to work with other member states to redirect direct and modify European policies and rules. So, with that all explained, what exactly are the chances of the Popular Union actually winning a majority in June? Well, unfortunately there's not actually been much polling thus far. One Harris Interactive poll from before the pact was agreed assumed that the left would unite and assumed that President Macron's party would form an alliance with the Republicans, with the latter so far seeming unlikely to happen. Regardless, this poll suggested that the two blocs would receive an equal share of the vote, around 33%. While a more recent poll by Cluster17 shows the left bloc leading Macron's party by 34 to 24.5%, though this should be taken with a pinch of salt because the French polling commission has questioned the strength of this company's methodology. Precise numbers aside though, the nature of France's electoral system means that it'll be a real challenge for the popular union to come even close to a majority, even if their vote share matched that of Macron's party. That's because the first round sees any number of candidates on the ballot in each constituency, and if no candidate gets above 50%, then a second round is held where the top two candidates, plus anyone who received over 12.5% of the vote, faces off in a second round against each other. So while the popular union increases the chances of left-wing candidates making it through to the second round, it doesn't provide much of a boost in one-on-one -on -one second round votes, when they'll likely be facing candidates from the centre and far right. Ultimately, we'll get a better understanding of the popular union's chances as the elections approach and more polling is carried out. But at this stage, it looks like the prospect of Macron being forced into a cohabitation remains pretty slim which is either good or bad news, depending on who you talk to. Regardless of your ideology though, bad news does seem all too prevalent at the moment. But there is one small thing you can do to help. You can donate money to causes that you care about without spending a penny. Yep, really. That's because Tab for a Cause is the sponsor of today's video, and they allow you to donate money just by using your browser. They support charities like Save the Children, who have been working to provide life-saving interventions in Ukraine since 2014, working to provide the most basic needs to vulnerable families, as well as providing psychological support and increasing awareness of the hazards of war. So, what can you do to help? Well, if you head to tabforacause.org forward slash Ukraine, you can add an extension to your browser which raises money to help the people of Ukraine every time you open a new tab. Yeah, it really is that simple. And you can even track the impact you've made personally. And you don't need to worry. They're not doing anything scary. They're just putting a couple of ads in the corner of your new tab page. And the money raised from advertisers goes straight towards the cause. Smart, right? 
Well, as I said, you can easily support the people of Ukraine and help contribute to the $1.3 million raised so far by heading to tabforacause.org forward slash Ukraine. Thanks for your support.